This is DA 21-0010, lodged with the Tweed Shire Council by NCV Enterprises for their desire to create a rural land sharing community in the Tweed Shire. Now this, this obviously has a bit of history. This is an update on what has been going on. Now when this application was first lodged on the 14th of January. It wasn't known publicly really until February when the public comment was then open and people were able to have their say. And anyone that's had their say and looked at the <laughs> multiple documents that are in here, they will know that some of these are hundreds of pages long and there's well, a large part of them, especially in the G appendix, that actually relate to DA 06-1054 that Peter Van Lyshout previously submitted to Council and also got approval for. So there's a lot of things that people went through and lots of, well, hundreds of submissions that were made to council and multiple issues that were raised with council. So many good questions that couldn't be answered and still I dare say remain unanswered as there's a lot of questions. Some of them have got to do with how can you obtain certain things under the only policy and schedule that will allow you to do these things like no subdivision you know you want multiple lots instead of single lots you want to build over an existing wildlife corridor you will destroy heritage sites and etc these are really big hurdles that you can't get around but before we get to that this cover letter oh sorry the civil work construction cost estimate this pdf here now if you open that up into a link you come up with a familiar page well familiar if you've looked at this before and which i dare say many people are actually familiar with because multiple people raised the question this is supposed to be civil works construction cost estimate so in other words, it's a very simple question. You want to perform a task, which is stage one, is to construct, um, upgrade the internal roads, to build uh, a construction shed or office. That's going to cost X amount of dollars. They do not intend to build or supply and install sewerage treatment supply systems, potable rainwater tanks, even rain, uh, firewater tanks, oh, sorry, firefighting fire rainwater tanks, or the solar panel grids. They could bear the cost of installing, as I believe it would go in the road as it's been upgraded, the telecommunications. So, of these that you're looking at, the only ones that you can actually see are legitimate costs. Uh, the general costs, the roads and earthworks, and the telecommunications. The on-site sewer, the rainwater tanks, and the solar power supply are more along the lines of owner-builder costs, and they are not part of the construction costs of stage one. And even if they got it through to the end of the stages, they still, the developers are not paying for these things. These are owner builder costs. So this issue has also been raised by council and many people. And they want to know why these costs that aren't going to be incurred by them well, pretty much for the large part, not even at any stage during the development, but these are 
owner builder costs. They will provide their own on-site sewerage system, rainwater tanks and solar power supply as they pick it out to go with the house that they would put there. The only thing that would be laid to the fence line is the telecommunications grid. So by my calculations, only 21 million could be justified legitimately as their development cost estimates, capital expenditure. Now the council have done a wonderful job of taking in hundreds of submissions and also it is a very complex DA. It has got, as I explained before, inserted in it where are we? For these, there are hundreds and hundreds of pages that make up something that is part of DA 06-1054. It is what Peter Van Lyshaw put forward as Nightcap Village and got approval for. And for what it appears like too is that this Appendix G was not submitted to the Council as we get Appendix G to us to examine. Most of, well, part of Appendix G is what was submitted by Planet or NCV Enterprises. And the rest of these, and even the rest of this part here, relate to DA 06-1054. It's detailing that on the land, giving an historical context to what was previously wanted to put, be put there. So that huge amount of information relating to historical information was put in amongst other information that is current, which is everything that appears relating to the old DA in these appendixes in G. All the other appendixes are an update of everything that needed to be covered. So you're really looking at two DAs in one. And that's without even considering that nobody can even view the DA that they would put in for the Nightcap Village itself that they still want to put in but they haven't put one in yet for. Now the reason I'm bringing up this particular PDF and this particular subject is because, well, you know, Pete Evans is somebody that the media like to, to print stories about. And it's really good that anything that Pete Evans is involved with because the media will just pick up something and run with the story. And even though the headlines has got Pete Evans' name in it, he's not really mentioned in the rest of the story because the rest of the story is actually this. Oh, sorry, I do beg my pardon. He is mentioned in here in one paragraph just the planned development known as Nightcap Village and spruiked by controversial celebrity chef Pete Evans is for an intentional community which would cater for almost 400 dwellings. So they do actually mention him in here. But the headlines is Pete Evans Nightcap Village overhaul, sorry, overhauled, overvalued by at least 7 million to be determined by council. So you read the story, which I'm not going to read it all out. I'm going to put it in the description so you can read it and also give you a link that if you've got access to the Tweed Daily News, the Daily Telegraph, and you can access that story, you can see it yourself. So bear in mind that this particular article, all of this is about the capital expenditure that I just showed you and all about the fact of how it added up to, hang on, let me show you. 
So here's the development application cost estimate. So 37 million plus 15 percent con contingency total cost excluding GST 44.4 million. So working on the base of 37 excluding GST that's what the project was valued at. And because it was valued at 37 million it was put in the hands of the Northern Regional Planning Panel, which you have to have a project worth 30, well, over $30 million. So by the estimations of what had been already bought up, that if you take out everything that isn't their cost, and only cost it up with what would be their anticipated costs, you could only come up with about 21 million. So the council put in or wrote to the developer and asked them to provide a revised costing. The result of that revised costing was that it put it under 30 million dollars and the authorising consent body is now no longer the Northern Regional Panel Planning Panel. It is now gone back to the Tweed Shire Council. It is the Tweed Shire Council who will make that decision. And Vince Connell from the Tweed Shire has uh, the Director of Planning and Regulation I know would have been working very hard these last so many months on all of the issues that have been raised around, well, not just this one page, but many of the other pages in the application. And even at the very core of the things that they would want to achieve that are not in line with the state environmental planning policy. So even considering that NICAP would be still considered under the state environmental planning policy, they still can't even abide by the conditions. And by very definition of the schedule in the SEPP, the authorising body cannot give consent if certain conditions are not met or if they are breached. So the council really has only one option as far as most people are concerned because there are things that are glaringly obvious uh, just like the civil construction costs were glaringly obvious that these were not forming part of stage one works and even if they were done after all of these other stages they are not costs that the developers are going to incur. So clearly from the text of this article, because I wasn't able to access it, but I was able to obtain a copy of what it said. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yes, thank you very much to the person who sent it to me. And the thing I found very interesting was after I read through it and I thought, well, that's good, it goes back to the council now, they get to, you know, deal with this because they do know it best. And also what works best in the Tweed Shire Council because it is a rather special area in the fact that it's bordering on, well, I'd have to say the oldest super volcano in the planet. It's billions of years old. And it probably formed a large part of the land masses of, yes, it's, it's part of an historical thing that goes far beyond just Australia's interest. It should be of worldwide interest that this was, you know, a significant part of where things were built and created. And it should be left the way that it is so that, it, you know, we can cultivate the natural environment more rather than destroy it. But anyway, um, the interesting thing I found was the last two paragraphs because clearly Vince Connell from the Tweedshire Council has talked to 
the Daily Telegraph, the Tweed De Telegraph, and spoken about the development and how it will now be reverting back to Council to be the final consent authority on that development application. And down here, they say that based on the calculated capital investment value of the proposal and following legal advice, Council considers that it is the consent of authority for DA 21-0010 and not the Northern Regional Planning Panel. A report will be submitted to the Planning Committee in their July 1 meeting for the Council's determination of the DA. Now I actually found that very interesting as a choice of words, determination of the DA. Not review um, or any other, but determination. In the mind that up here we are talking about that making it no longer the required value to be determined by the Northern Regional Planning Panel. So determination is indicating a decision being made as far as I'm concerned. So, and well, when the development application first came out, there were lots of questions about once the public period closes and with all the issues that have been raised, how long will it take to find out whether they would get approval or not? And the safest and best estimate once the volume of problems became apparent was at least a year because you would need to deal with all these issues, bring them in line, there would be communications back and forward, that would take time. And that time to do that would safely, minimally, depending on how many issues you ended up with, a year before you would be able to say, right, all of these things are now bought in line and we can make a determination. So when I see that last sentence, I'm actually thinking, well, um, that's actually a quote from Vince Connell and he's saying that a report will be submitted, you in, go to the bit past it, for council's determination of the DA. So are they just confirming that they will be the consenting authority or will they actually be make, making the determination? Because during the public opinion period, there were many issues that were brought out that contradict the minimum requirements under the SEPP schedule that they can use to do it in the Tweed Shire Council. So all the questions about all the areas that I just don't see how you can ask for this to apply. It's a clear violation of this one, this one, and this one, and this one. And it also says that the authorising or consenting body cannot give consent if it is in breach of any of those things. And yet they want to do so many things that would be apparently in breach. So how could you, well, to me it just seems like how could you actually have the goal to blatantly, it's a very simple schedule in the SCPP. It's not that complicated to figure out what's what. So when you look at it and you go, oh, that's not a convenient truth for someone that wants that to be an inconvenient, you know, just let's let's put it out of the picture. We need to find someone who can tell us how they can argue around it because if they knock us back on that, we can argue around it. Well, there are some things you can't argue around. You might be able to find a lawyer that will say, yeah, I can do it, you could argue this, but he's got no real expectation of winning. It doesn't matter because he's still going to get paid anyway whether you win or lose in court. You've got to remember that with lawyers, you know. <laughs> anyway. There's, there could be a strong likelihood of having a determination on DA 21-0010 after the July 1 meeting. 
maybe not. Maybe councillors will choose to review the report and come back at a later date. It depends on how up to date they've been kept with things, which I would have to imagine they've been kept very well up to date because it would involve working very closely with legal advice and things could only progress along as with all councillors making confidential decisions that you know you can't be privy to in, in the public but they need to make decisions based on legal advice so there i would expect that even all the councillors before they meet on july 1 are basically just receiving a report that confirms what they already know but either way after the july 1 meeting things will be progressed in some way there will be either you know another date set to review it finally or there will be some more information but as it stands now the Tweedshire Council have been spending months going through all of the submissions all of the issues with the development application especially the ones that you can't get a workaround if you have a lot of issues that you can work over the next, you know, say six months to let's move this and change this and we'll work it this way and you, you format to a way of, yes, now you can submit it for approval but you've still got all these other ones that you can't do anything about. No matter what you do, you can't change it unless you actually change that you want to put in less places you're not going to disrupt a wildlife corridor, you're not going to build on any heritage sites, you're going to make it only one single lot, you're not going to subdivide. All of these etc. and you're not going to operate a business within it that hasn't been approved yet. And that's another issue that I would explain in a way how you know, some people disagree that it and say, oh no, it's included, and I say no, it's... I mean, they'd say, no, it's not included, and i say, yes, it is, because they, NICAP on Minjin will show on a whole map where everything is, where they intend for everything to be, and the land that is part of what would all be co-owned by everybody. That's as the story goes. But anyway, it's good to have differing points of view to things, because... The more that other people see things in different ways, the more that you can come up with the ways that, well, people would argue, as has been done when this issue of the capital expenditure has been raised with someone like Derek Zilman. His response to it was, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, your copy and paste response of, it'll be fine, mate, just at the end of the day, you can live in your illusion world, but, you know, I think reality is actually going to show you wrong. So this article and quotes from Vince Connell at the Tweedshire Council has shown that what Derek Zilman can copy and paste is wrong. And I would then question also the other advice that he gives to people that he copies and pastes that other things can be achieved when they can't. You know, sometimes I would think that you buy into so much that, oh, you're the only smart person in the world and nobody else out there is intelligent, you know, with all these conspiracy theorists and everything out there that think that all the sheeple, you know, if you don't align with their beliefs, you're a sheep and you must be dumb. Well, sadly for uh, these people... That's not actually the case. The people choose to make decisions in different ways about things and to make changes where they can. And many people made changes where they can on Nightcap on Minjimble by raising all the issues in the DA. Now I'm going to get off that and go on to where you can also make a difference and it's not going to be anywhere near as time consuming as making a submission for the DA. 
I got an email this morning because I signed up to be advised of everything and I got the email I've been waiting for. The planning proposal for the rural land sharing communities. Essentially to remove themselves, the Tweed Shire Council, from the SEPP. And here is the official planning proposal, PP21-0001. You can have your say in various ways. You can email them directly. You can send them via Australia Post, or you can click on this link, which will open up this. Oops, hang on. This one. And here you can follow the links and again make your choice. To submit online you actually need to register to put in your submission and take the survey. So they might actually ask you yes or no questions and then leave you with a little box at the end to have your say on anything you didn't yes or no to or whatever. So the purpose of it is, as has been discussed before, is to stop rural land sharing communities in the Tweed Shire by removing their ability under the state environmental planning policy. Now over here there's links to documents that you can read about the planning proposal and as I said you can follow the links to have your say. And I would recommend taking five minutes to even just send through an email or have your say to support the council because there will be people that will be objecting to this. You can automatically assume that NCV Enterprises is going to object to this because if this goes through and if they have problems and they would have to resubmit a completely new development application after they've completely remodified everything, they couldn't do it if rural land sharing communities weren't still under the state environmental planning policies for the Tweed Shire. So they have a vested interest to not see this policy go through. Also, I know that someone like Peter Van Leishout has been keeping a close eye on this and doesn't want it to go through too. So he would undoubtedly put in uh, a submission and say, no, I don't want this to go through. So. If you're thinking, well, it won't go through, no worries, don't don't need to worry about it because, you know, they've, they've proven everything. But it really does matter because the people making this decision, if they only get even a couple of against, we don't want this, but nobody turns around and says, yes, we do want it, they might just assume that through lack of hearing any differently, that the strongest voices that they hear are, are in opposition to this. So in this instance, they might support the fact that no, they'll knock it back. So only in you just having your quick say and just saying, look, I support this planning proposal. It just has to be that simple. You can write a paragraph, you can, but just make yourself count, have your say so that you are a voice that shows that the way that you feel about this. Don't let it only be the voices that say, no, we don't want it. Because, you know, it worked with the development application. There were more voices that said that they didn't want it than said that they did want it. Because how many people would have actually put in a submission to the council to actually say, well, we really want this? Mostly people put in the effort to say they don't want something. So again, what I would assume happened with DA21-0010 is that the voices that were opposed to it were far greater than any that supported it. So in this instance, if you do not support this planning provo proposal, the voices against it will also be more than those who are for it. And the weight of numbers, even if it's only two or three, in the absence of anyone saying, yes, we support this, 
the council may be left out in the cold a little bit. So support your council so that they can get this through. I'll leave links for all of this and I'll also copy and paste the article to the description so you can have a read of that if you can't get access. So that's an update on DA21-0010 and also the planning policy change that the Tweedshire Council want to make to remove themselves from the state environmental planning policy. And what you can do is to go on to their website and follow the links to have your say. Support the council to put that through. Or even if there is a decision made at the end of this, even if Nightcap or Minjimbal can't argue it legally so they have to go back and reformat everything, even if in the worst case scenario you need to still be able to stop the ability for these things to actually develop in the future. All the time that people spent, and you have to imagine all the man hours that have been chewing up at your rates to deal with this complex issue and this development application put in. You know, most development applications are not this complicated. Do not create as much controversy and certainly do not create as much work for council. I couldn't imagine the number of man hours combined would have to be hundreds of man hours at the council and the cost to them, especially taking on legal advice on how to deal with all these things. It, at the end of the day, you the ratepayer pays for that. So the more the council's resources are wasted on things that nobody wants to have there in the first place, well, you could be spending that in creating things that you do want and need. So support the council, follow the links, have your quick say, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll talk to you next time. Bye.